Welcome back to the synopsis. Today I'm going to show you a 2018 action, adventure, crime, and thriller movie titled Death Race. The American economy has collapsed four years after 2008, crime and unemployment are on the rise, and the majority of the country's prisons are run for profit by private corporations. The main subject of the film is the Terminal Island Prison, which broadcasts Death Race to the entire world via a well-known pay website on the internet. Death Race is a conflict between cars as well as a race to the finish line. The movie opens with a race between Machine Gun Joe, Tyrese Gibson, a well-known masked driver, and Frankenstein, who is accompanied by a female navigator, David Carradine, in a cameo appearance. When Joe destroys Frank's car, his navigator ejects, after Frank's defenses fail, Frankenstein is either critically injured or already dead. On the day the steel mill where he works closes, Jensen Ames, Jason Statham, is accused of killing his wife, however, the real murderer is a masked intruder who threatens Ames with a finger gun as he leaves. Ames is imprisoned, where the cruel prison warden Hennessy, Joan Allen, forces him to take over as the driver of Frankenstein's Ford Mustang. She informs Ames that she is aware of his infant who was abandoned and that prisoners are only released after completing five death races. However, because Ames will be donning the mask of the legendary Frankenstein, who had four victories at the time of his demise, he will only need to complete one race. The races are divided into three stages, stages one and two, where the driver must survive, stage three, where you must win the race, and stage four, where you must gain freedom. Elizabeth Case, Ames's navigator, is first introduced to Ames just before the stage one race by Natalie Martinez, who also served as Frankenstein's previous navigator. Ames notices Bachenko, another competitor, making the same hand motion as the burglar who killed his wife during the race. During stage one, Syed, Grimm, and Travis Colt all pass away as drivers. After taking a significant hit from Machine Gun Joe, Ames comes in last. Ames discovers that he is a participant in a scheme to perpetuate the Frankenstein legend for Hennessy's own financial gain. He confronts Hennessy about the driver, but she responds by showing him images of his child with foster parents and asking him if he thinks he could care for his child more effectively than they could. He takes one of the images and walks out infuriated. He visits Pachenko's team's garage the evening before stage two to confront him. He is taken down by a few team members, but with assistance from a member of his garage, Ames is able to respond and almost kill Pachenko. The prison guards instructing them to save it for the race prevents his retaliation. As soon as the stage 2 race starts, Ames starts to question Case about her motivations. She explains to him that she was instructed to destroy Frankenstein's defense mechanisms in order to prevent him from achieving freedom and thereby earn her own freedom. Ames understands that he is not intended to survive the death race at all but rather to perish so that a new Frankenstein can be introduced into the prison and spectators will continue to pay to watch the races. In stage 2, he seeks retribution by crashing and rolling Pachenko's car, which gives him the opportunity to drive back and exact revenge by snatching Pachenko's neck as the victim scrambles to safety. The dreadnought, Hennessy's secret weapon, an 18-wheel tank truck loaded with powerful machine guns, that had been in production for months, kills 14K, Carson, and Riggins before the remaining five drivers. Stage 2 is completed when the dreadnought is destroyed by Ames and Machine Gun Joe. Ames' car is armed with an explosive before the Stage 3 race by Hennessy, who is aware that Ames is aware of what is happening and does not want him to cross the finish line alive. However, Ames comes up with his own plan after seeing a picture of a destroyed billboard from a previous race that one of his crew members showed him, and he suggests to Joe that he and Frankenstein have a conversation. There are now just Frankenstein and Machine Gun Joe left in the Stage 3 race. Ames quickly assumes the lead as the race gets underway. The track has been rigged by Hennessy to favor Joe, so the odds are against Ames. Joe follows Ames closely the entire lap, and as they approach the start of the second lap, Joe prepares newly added missiles and fires an RPG in Ames' direction. At the track's initial turn, they appear to miss the car and strike a billboard instead. It is demonstrated that the scene Ames saw was a bridge leading from the island to the mainland, hidden behind the demolished billboard. Police cars and helicopters chase after Ames and Joe as they make their getaway onto the bridge. Ames releases his exposed fuel tank, causing it to explode and stop the pursuing vehicles as the cruisers close in on the two vehicles. 
Hennessy then orders the explosive under Ames Clark to be detonated as part of her backup plan, but nothing happens because coach Ames mechanic discovered, removed, and deactivated the bomb before the race even started. Joe and Ames escape past the bridge, and Hennessy directs the helicopters to concentrate on Ames. However, when Case informs him that Hennessy had already signed her release papers for her work and that she owed one to the old Frankenstein, he switches seats with Case. He leaps out of the vehicle, giving the helicopters the impression that he is still inside. Joe and Ames reunite, lamenting Hennessy's continued existence as they board a train to flee. Ames' Mustang is quickly stopped, and Frankenstein is captured. Later, when a guard tells Hennessy about gifts sent to her for the record number of viewers who subscribed to the death race, she still thinks she won. Coach, however, detonates the explosive placed on the Frankenstein car inside, causing them to explode. Six months later, Case shows up unexpectedly as Ames and Joe are working in a junkyard in Mexico. She is welcomed by the two men, and Case gets to meet Piper, Ames' infant. As the film comes to a close, Ames explains that while he is aware that he is not the perfect parent, nobody could love his child more than he could.